Hello, I'm Josette Lewis, the Chief Scientific Officer for the Almond Board of California. Thanks for joining me today for the session on how we're investing in almond co-product utilization as part of our commitment to zero waste. Feel free if you have any questions to enter them in the chat and I'll look forward to getting back to you on those questions. The almond kernel that we enjoy is really just about one third of what comes out of our orchards each year. Shown here on the top is a handful of shells, sort of woody uh, coating that surrounds the almond kernel. And to the right of that is a handful of hulls. These are really the fleshy part of the almond, uh, equivalent to the part of a peach or an apricot that we enjoy every summer. And on the bottom is an example of some of the woody biomass, the twigs, and for a young orchard, the prunings that come out. Putting everything we grow to optimal use makes good sense. It lowers our environmental footprint, and thus it forms one of the four sustainability goals that we set for the orchard of the future. Uh, we are on a journey to uh, measure our progress towards those goals and look forward to reporting out in 2025. The zero waste goal is really all about putting everything we grow to optimal use. The use of those co-products also makes good sense for the grower. It helps defray some of the cost of the hulling and shelling step in the processing and thus um, returns more of the value back to the grower. In reality, we've been very close to zero waste. Historically, the hulls have always gone into the dairy feed industry here in California. Again, they're uh, very high in sugars and fibers like a peach or an apricot. The shells have been used as bedding for those same dairy cows. The absorptive property of the hulls helps manage waste in the livestock facilities and keeps those animals clean and healthy. The sticks and particularly the trees at the end of the life of the orchard, that woody co-product, has historically gone into bioenergy plants in the Central Valley. That co-product utilization has substantially reduced the carbon footprint of almonds. These is, this is data from a life cycle assessment published by the University of California at Davis in 2015. That area circled in green represents the carbon offset for the bioenergy that was historically part of the almond industry. But changes in some of these industries mean we need to keep innovating. The size of the dairy industry is diminishing here in California, and those first-generation bioenergy plants that gave us that carbon offset have largely closed in the Central Valley. As almond production has increased, so too do those co-products. The bulk of these almond co-products make them costly to transport long distances away from the Central Valley. At the same time, it means there's a consistent supply of co-products that could provide new manufacturing opportunities. So innovation is part of how we will keep the almond industry profitable and sustainable. Over the past five years, we've invested over $2 million in new research to identify uh, new uses for these almond co-products, spanning hulls, shells, and woody bat biomass shown here. The majority of that research shown in blue has focused on the hulls and largely, as I will talk about shortly, in the animal feed industry. In addition, I'll touch upon research around shells and some of the innovative uses we hope that we'll continue to develop there and some of the successes we've had in the area of woody biomass. So hulls, the best opportunities remain around animal feed. Again, a reminder, these are high quality products, high in sugars, fibers, and phytonutrients that are good um, for animal health. Yeah, so in the dairy industry, new research has shown that you can increase the feed ration, the proportion of the dairy uh, feed that comes from the hulls to 25% and still get high productive and healthy animals. Research also shows a variety of animals uh, do well with uh, almond hulls as part of their feed ration. Everything from equine to, to beef cattle, to pork, to sheep, and um, to poultry. And that very 
Uh, interesting looking bit of livestock that you see in the bottom right corner. Those are larvae from black soldier flies, an industry that is starting to develop as a new form of poultry feed. So we've done supported research that shows that almond holes are also a good uh, source of nutrition for black soldier fly operations. And hopefully that will con continue to develop as an opportunity for poultry feed. Indeed, we've also done research that shows there may be value for people too. Um, research that shows a potential extraction of food grade fibers, sugars, and phytochemicals that could be used in food um, manufacturing. In terms of the shells, a variety of uses from burning those shells at low temperatures and low levels of oxygen to produce either biochar or what are often called torrified shells. In terms of biochar, we funded research that shows uh, there may be promise as a soil amendment, although that is research that is still ongoing. We do know that incorporating almond uh, biochar can improve uh, nitrate management in the soil, improving overall um, practices to sustain water quality. Interestingly, by combining shells and hulls in a technique called biosolarization, we can uh, use these products to help um, address harmful nematodes that are found in soils and can be harmful to, to both almond production and a variety of crops uh, here in California, as you see the strawberries down there in that lower picture. Some of the most uh, promising opportunities are these torrified shells and incorporation into plastics, particularly recycled plastics or bioplastics, giving them much stronger uh, properties for use in everything from pallets to nursery pots to uh, things that we might find in our own homes, such as um, composite decking material. And there are specialty potential spe specialty opportunities for activated carbon in things like lithium ion, ion battery production. We're already starting to see some of these applications of almond co-product utilization in the market today. Fun example, maybe doesn't use a whole lot of hulls, uh, doesn't take as much volume as we'd like, uh, is the use of fermentation of those hulls. Again, they're high in sugar, so it could be part of the fermentation process in beer production. Pretty fun to think about drinking an almond beer on a hot day in the summer. And we're very excited to see a second generation of biofuels that takes advantage of agricultural biomass, including almond shells, um, for for energy production. Um, but perhaps our most successful example of almond co-product utilization is the largest biomass that we produce, and those are the trees themselves. So at the end of the life of an orchard, uh, those trees are pulled out. And as you can see, using very heavy duty equipment here, those trees are um, shredded and then chipped and that very large volume of, of wood chips is uh, deep ripped into the soil. So buried deeply in the soil where they will very slowly degrade and release uh, some of the nutrients, uh, including the carbon that is uh, present in those trees. It's a great win for the environment as well as for the grower, as you can see here. In terms of uh, carbon sequestration, it uh, delivers five tons of carbon per hectare and again delivers that deep into the soil so long-term sequestration there for the grower research over the last 10 years shows that the practice of whole orchard recycling can increase the water use efficiency by 20 percent in that orchard that follows that significant amount of organic matter that we've put in the soil helps improve water holding capacity and it also delivers a 19% increase in crop yield. So a great example of a practice that is increasingly being adopted in the, in the industry. And again, um, improving our environmental footprint as well as returning directly to the grower.
So two years ago, the almond industry made a very public commitment to sustainability with four goals for the Orchard of the Future, Orchard 2025 goals, we call them. One of those is a zero waste goal, to put everything we grow in the orchard to optimal use. Whole Orchard Recycling is taking out an old orchard, grinding it up, recycling it, working it into the ground, and replanting another orchard in its place. Traditional orchard removal generally consists of pushing and burning the trees or chipping the trees and removing them off site. Whole orchard recycling incorporates the trees into the ground so that everything is kept on site. The cogeneration plants are no longer an economically viable alternative for growers. So whole orchard recycling represents an alternative for biomass management where growers can implement and recycle their orchards. By returning the biomass to the ground and building up the microbial populations in the soil, which ultimately leads to healthier soil and ultimately leads to more returns to the grower because we get better yields after doing this, it just doesn't get any better than this. So what we've learned from 10 years of research is that whole orchard recycling is really turning a problem into an asset. The economics show that it's beneficial to practice whole orchard recycling. You're really investing in the health of the soil for the next orchard to come. Growers are their own stewards of their own land. They've been farming it for generations. They want to improve their soil health. And if they become aware that whole orchard recycling can improve their soil's health, can increase nutrients, can increase yields, and they can do so without interfering with harvest or stunting the next generation orchard, they're going to want to implement whole orchard recycling. And that's why we've seen it embraced so wholeheartedly. There are two great ways to help offset the cost of whole orchard recycling. The San Joaquin Valley Air Quality District has an incentive program, as does the California Department of Food and Agriculture's Healthy Soils Program. As a grower myself, talking to you as another grower, what I would tell you is look into this. There are really some significant potential benefits to it, and it really can improve the soil and the returns you get out of your orchards. You can go to almonds.com, or you can reach out to your local Cooperative Extension Farm Advisor for more information. So a lot of different opportunities through our five years of research in this area. Our next step is to really better understand the market potential of some of these applications. So this year we are initiating a market assessment to identify which of these are the most promising opportunities to create commercial value at scale from holes and shells and deliver those benefits both to growers and to the environment. So stay tuned as we continue on this journey toward optimal use. Again, thanks for joining me here today. And please feel free to enter any questions that we might address to you.